Hello, in this video I will show you how to create a Bezier surface using MATLAB. That's right, we have ascended to the next dimension when it comes to Bezier surfaces. For this one, I will use MATLAB version 2020B and I think that's all you need to know. So let's go over some theory first. I will be using this book as reference. Uh, it is called An Introduction to Nerves with a Historical Perspective by David Rogers. If you go to chapter 5, you will find Bezier surfaces and the only thing uh, I want to show you are the mathematical definitions. I want to first compare it to the Bezier curve definition. Here you can see that now we have two summations. It might look difficult, but it's actually really not. All this means is that we will have two for loops instead of one. We also have a second term for the basis functions. Instead of j, now we have j and k. And they are defined by their respective equations, which both look exactly the same, but with different nomenclature. Also notice that the parametric variable is not t anymore. Now the equation depends on u and w. Both of them, u and w, go from 0 to 1. Likewise, we have two binomial coefficients. So it is the same we did before for the Bezier curve, but with extra steps. I will explain what the basis functions are later in the video when we get to them uh, during the writing of the code. But I will also link a better video that explains them more in detail in the description of this one. So make sure to check that out. First, let's recall what the Bezier curve is. I will define five control points. And for this example, let's just keep it simple and make it a straight line. We have two indices, i and n. N is the number of segments that the Bezier curve will have, and that is basically just means how many spaces there are between control points, and that will always be one less than the number of control points. I is just going to be a counter, and that is each control point will be assigned a value from zero to whatever N is. So I will basically tell you which control point you are on, because I starts from zero, that means that point number five will have an index of four. Now let's expand this example to the next dimension and look at what a Bezier surface would look like. The first thing we do is to recognize the number of control points for Bezier surfaces. We will count by rows and columns, and I will separate the variables. On the left, I'll have rows, and on the right, I'll have uh, the values for columns. How many rows do we have in this example? Well, three rows, and how many columns? Five, right? We know n is the number of segments, and that is one less than the number of control points, so it will be the same for both. We need a counter now, so we'll remain the same for both. Lastly, we if we leave things like these, it will get just confusing because we're indexing columns and rows with the same symbols. So let's change the symbols for columns. Instead of i, let's have j, and instead of n, let's have m. So j now goes from 0 to whatever m is. Also, rather than referring to rows and columns, let's refer them in terms of u direction and w direction. Now, I am explicitly using the nomenclature used in the, in the equation, so you can relate the parts of the equation to what I'm doing on the screen right now. Regarding the control point indexation, let's first assume the bottom left node is our starting point. That will mean that it would be index 0 and 0 because it's at row 0 and column 0. Remember that we start counting from 0 instead of 1. What would be the index of the red point? So let's count the rows. So 0, 1, 2. The i will be equal to 2. Now, now the columns. So from the left, 0, 1, 2, 3. j will be equal to 3. The index of this point is 2, 3. Okay, enough of this. I won't go over the whole theory. Check the videos in the description for that. This should be enough for you to understand uh, what the code is going to do and how to implement the equation into the algorithm. So let's go to MATLAB now. First, setting up the user defined variables. Now let's define u and w. These are the number of control points in u and w respectively. In this case, it is three for both. I just want to keep it simple. Next, the number of cells in both directions. This is basically specifying the refinement of the surface. And since we have now two directions, we have to specify for direction u and direction w. For the control points, this time I will not use uh, random points, but instead this array, because the surface tends to overlap when the points are randomly generated. And I will show you an example of that at the end. You can see the control point size is three by three. And that is like saying u cpts by w cpts. That's how you know what size your control point arrays need to be. Now from these variables, we can extrapolate some other values that we will need later on. Let's, so let's go over n and m. They represent the number of segments as I explained before. And for Bezier curves, that is one less than the number of control points. So both are equal to the respective control points minus one. 
fairly easy. Let's create a parametric grid and we can do that using the lean space function just the same way they did for the Bezier curve and the T variable. Now we do for U and W. Remember that the limits are from 0 to 1 and the number of partitions will be represented by the respective sales variable. Talking about I and J, then remember they are counters that go from 0 to the number of control points in that direction. We have two binomial coefficients to calculate this time. So CU, this is for the U direction, is equal to factorial of N divided by the factorial of i times the factorial of n minus i. And for CW is the same, but replace n with m and i with j. Before calculating the main Bezier curve, we are going to separately calculate the basis functions because dealing with indexation and make it match the equation nomenclature is just an unnecessary hurdle. Let's open two for loops now. One will be for basis functions in U and the other one would be in W. Both will loop from one to the respective number of control points and I am using K as the index here. Now defining the basis functions, here I will use J, that is how the book calls it, is equal to the binomial coefficient times the parametric variable times the parenthesis 1 minus u to the power of n minus i. Here you use a dot before the multiplication because you're multiplying two arrays and you want a simple term by term multiplication. For w, do the same but replace all the terms of u for the ones with w. Now initialize the arrays where the coordinates for the Bezier curve will be stored. It will have the same size as the size of u by w. So if u has a refinement of 10 cells and w is refined to 10 cells, two, this array will be a 10 by 10 array. So since you want to create an array that is filled with zeros, we can use the zeros functions and the dimensions will be defined by the cells variables. Finally, we've reached the main loop. Open two nested for loops and the first one will loop from one to n plus one and don't worry about understanding why MATLAB indexes starts from one and we need to start from zero so just copy what I have it works. The nested loop will be the same but will go from i to n plus one. So the Bezier curve will be equal to the basis function j. Remember that I store them in an array so I have to call them row by row. That times basis functions k with the respective indexes times the control point coordinate plus the previous calculated Bezier curve. One little detail is transpose the J array before multiplication by using the apostrophe. That way you will get a resulting array of the same size as the one you created before, filled with zeros, and you will be able to add them together. Otherwise you're going to get an error. Do this for Y and C2 and that's pretty much it. Let's plot the basis functions first by using plot U versus J and W versus K. Here you can see that the number of lines represent the number of control points and that the higher the value of that line in the vertical direction is, the more influence that point will have at that location. This is the reason why the curve always starts and ends at the first and last control points because as you can see, the blue line for the first control point is at the maximum of one when u is equal to zero and you can see the same happening in the other direction. In order to plot this, uh, I will use the mesh plotting function you just have to specify the x, y, and c coordinates in this case, x base here, y base here, and c base here. Then hold on because we are going to plot the control points as well. By using plot 3, specify x, y, and c, those are our control points. And here I'm just defining that I want circular markers and the face color to be black. And then hold off. Now let's see the long awaited result. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? You can see how the control points influence the behavior here. You can try adding more points and check the basis functions. It is pretty interesting. I will not do that here. I was going to show you why using random points for the control points is not good. Let me just paste this here, comment this out, and rerun it. Yeah, now you can see why this. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Because this is a 3D shape, even though it's a surface, it still is a 3D object. You can export it using STL code that we wrote in one of my previous videos. So if you want to check that out, it's in the description. You specify the name, then you give the coordinates, you specify the type of file that you want and export it. And yeah, well, hopefully you learned something new. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Also, one more thing, if you want to use your own values, replace these three lines here. And just remember that the arrays have to have a dimension of U PTS by WPTS. All right, now, bye.